welcome to my channel, Creations by Christine. That's me! Anyways, today in this tutorial video, I'm going to show you how to make this super cute baby backpack. I haven't finished the strings on this one yet. But it's got the little thing to hang it up. Little straps for your wrist, so you can put your keys, phone, lipstick, lipstick, lip chap, whichever in it. And it comes with a little button and the drawstring, and it's actually huge. It's monstrous inside, so big that it can comfortably fit $100 in Canadian dimes, a quarter, sorry, not dimes. Just might be a little, little on the heavy side, but it fits. So let's jump right in and I'll show you how we're going to make this. Okay, so for this tutorial for the cute little backpack with handles and a hook thing, you are going to need some yarn. I'm using today just some Red Heart Comfort and I believe it's the color Denim Fleck. Yeah, it's got cute little flecks in it. So, this calls for a 5.5mm hook. I'm going to go with a 5, just because it's a backpack and I don't want stuff falling out of it. So, um, you also need a pair of scissors and a button and a needle to sew in your ends. So, first off, we'll start. by making a slip knot and that will be followed by 10 chains. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then one more the chain up so a total of 11 and then what you're going to want to do is skip the first stitch and go in or chain sorry not stitch and go into the second chain and you're just going to single crochet in each chain all the way across to the end I may need to change my hook I don't like the way this one is working very much Give me one sec. Okay, sorry, I had to change my hook. I didn't realize that one was a plastic hook. But, uh, so just keep single crocheting all the way to the end. And then once you get to the end, you should have 10 single crochets. So, one, two, three. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Chain one and turn your work and skip the first spot and go into the second spot and single crochet across ten. Now you're just going to want to keep repeating this until you get to. Um, I can't remember how many rows it was that I did, but I just made a square. So once you make a perfect square, I think it was 11 rows it worked out to be. It wasn't quite, wasn't quite 10 rows, like a 10 by 10, because of the way I stitch. It may work out a little bit different to the way you stitch. Tight tension is, um, so here I am at the end of my row, chain one, turn, and skip the first one into the second. But yeah, depending on your tension, the yarn you're using, whichever, just try and get it as close to a square as you can. And if you'd like to pause now, I will meet you back here when we both have a square. Okay, so I am just finishing up my last row here. Single crocheting all the way through both loops. Pretty straightforward 
just wanted to note that at the end, when you think you're at the end, you're not really at the end. A lot of people mess up, their squares will start to kind of peter in and taper off. There is actually a stitch there, right there. See it? Stitch on the very end. So don't forget that tenth stitch, otherwise you'll start kind of crocheting a triangle. So here's my little square. Now to know how I've got a square, I just fold it in half. If it's a triangle, it works. So for me, I've got two, four, six, eight, nine rows. It turned out to be nine rows. So what you want to do after you've finished your rows for your base of your backpack, we're making this part right here, base. After we make the base, we just want to chain one at the end of our row, and then we're going to do a, a border all the way around. So what I do is I do two stitches in the first one. Sorry. And then I just go into the next little row at the end of the row. And because I have nine rows, I should have nine stitches. So let's see how this works out. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, and now I'm back at my corner here with my tail. And I'm just going to go into that corner stitch and I'm going to do three single crochets. One, two, three, and then just continue crocheting over your tail and going around now the first row, the bottom, that's why we didn't have to do no fancy starters or anything like that. Just keep going across the bottom, These, this is pretty straightforward. So. My tail is pretty much done. I'm just going to stick it there behind me and keep working without going around the tail. Coming to the corner here, which I'll do three single crochets. One, two, three. And then work my way up the side again. Nine stitches. Now the sides are a little trickier, but as long as you can kind of just get your hook in there along these little spots here it's a little bit easier here we go. and I am coming up to my last corner and then so tight there all right I want to do three in this corner one two, three, and then carry on around your border and that will take us back to the very start. All right, so we've reached the end here and I'll put my last stitch in and then go into that first of this oh, that's not the first that's the first <laughs> sorry guys stitching a little too tight there we go so once you get to the end you slip stitch and chain one and then just carry on single crocheting and one single crochet in each stitch that you made all the way around until you reach now we're working on the sides of the bag here and we are just gonna go up I go about three to four inches on mine And you're just going to single crochet all the way up to the top 
and I will meet you back when we get to the top. Okay, so I just wanted to say as as I'm crocheting along, uh, once you get about three or four rows up, you'll notice that the corners are starting to really curl inwards. And this is about the time when you want to flip your work. Just like that. And then just keep going around and around and around, making a bag. So if you just want to pause it here and work your bag up to about three to four inches, whichever size, height you desire, require. Um, if you want to put your cell phone in it, you might want to make it a few inches taller, depending on what cell phone you have. But, uh, so yeah, just pause the video here and I'll meet you back in a sec. Okay, so I'm back with my four inches or so of single crochet rows, maybe a little bit more, but whatever. This one was about four inches. So now we're going to work on this bit here, the top. So just wanted to show you guys the last couple stitches here. And then once you get to the end, just slip stitch and there. So that's what you got. Okay, so you take your yarn and we're gonna do the magic ring this time. So magic ring, I just take the tail end and I twist it towards myself. Don't twist this way, it won't work. So twist towards yourself this way, and then put your hook in the hole, grab that yarn, and bring it back up, make a slip stitch, and that's your little magic ring. And we're going to do six single crochets in here. And then you're going to grab your little tail and cinch it tight. Like this. My sound effects suck. <laughs> okay. So now what you're going to do is you're going to go back into that first stitch. And we're not going to slip stitch. We're just going to keep going. I should have brought a stitch marker. Oh well, I'll just count. But you're just going to do one round of increase. So that's two single crochets in every spot. So if you do it right, you should have um, 12 stitches. Sorry. That might just be the Canadian me saying sorry. I'm not too sure. I don't know why I'm saying sorry. Okay, so just two more left to go here. Okay, now instead of keeping on going, what I did was I chain one and I flip and then I do it different than a chain two. You guys can also replace this with the chain two. Instead of chain one and flipping, you can chain two and flip. But instead, I make my loop slightly larger. And then I go around back and grab this yarn. And then I work a half double crochet. So for this one, I did. Let's go check here. So I did four half double crochets. And then a half double crochet increase. So that's two half double crochets in the same stitch. Twice. Half double crochet the remaining should be five four two 
then once you get to your fourth half double crochet we're going to leave those open those last two stitches and either chain two and flip or like i do chain one and do the alternate i'll be posting a little video on all these little tricks and stuff like that if you guys are interested but so the next row i went i believe it was five Sorry, I'm kind of winging this as I'm going here. Okay, so half double crochet here. And then we are going to do two in the next stitch. And then two in the next stitch. And then carry on down the side. Half double crocheting one, one, two, three, four, five. So that's five half double crochets, two increases, and five half double crochets. You have something that kind of looks like that. And then either chain two or whichever method you prefer. And then for the final row, we are going to half double crochet five, four and five, and then, sorry, six, not five, and then two half double crochets in the next one, and then we're going to chain two. This is leaving a little space for the button. Actually, sorry, chain three. Chain three for my button. And then you are going to go into the next, very next stitch, and do a half double crochet increase, two in the same, and then finish off the row with just regular half double crochets should be six three four five six perfect okay now just to make this edge at the bottom here you notice on mine yours will probably be all wonky too it's because we skipped those few stitches here so what I do is you're going to chain one and then you're going to single crochet across this bottom and neaten it up and make it look nice. So in the first one I split my stitch and single crochet two into one half double crochet. So that's a total of four stitches and then you hit your circle. The circle's pretty straightforward. The stitches are there for you. So just go one in each spot. And then we're back to the last single crochets, two in each half double crochet along the side. And then once you reach the end, you can just slip stitch and leave quite a long tail on this one because we're going to use it to sew it on here. I didn't really leave a big tail here. So I leave a couple feet of a tail. And then that's your little top. You tighten your circle. So it's almost non existent. Okay. And we're just going to sew it onto the top. Now I sew, when I stitched it in, I just stitched it with a slip stitch across. 
You can single crochet it as well, but I only did the one loop. It leaves a nice little ridge along here. So you just put either single crochets or slip stitches to attach. Okay, so I forgot to mention that when you sew your lid on, you need, oh, I use a smaller crochet hook. This says a size four, but uh, it definitely is not because this is a four and a half. So I know the sizing is wrong on this needle, but I love this needle anyway. Or hook, sorry, not needle. So, okay, once you've finished your body of the bag, you're gonna kind of fold it like a sandwich like this. And sometimes you just gotta mess with it a little bit. It'll kind of retain its shape over time, but right here is where you're going to want to attach your lid. So what I do is I go through my lid first, and then into the back loop only, and then grab your string, your long, long tail you made. And I'm going to do it with slip stitches. So I just slip stitch. And then into the next back loop only. And straight through both loops. Sorry, I forgot to mention this. Both loops on the bag. Back loop, or sorry, back loop only on the bag. Both loops not on the bag. So when you're going through the, the bag lid, you're going through both loops. When you're going through the bag body, you go through the back loop. So I'm just slip stitching through here with a small needle. And because I'm using such a small needle, I'm going to have to chain one in between sometimes to keep it in a line. So when you have to use a smaller hook like this, sometimes it'll do that. You'll be way back. Yeah, I've got to go into here. And then I, it's not. It's too tight, so I just chain one, and then I go through. It, it lines up nicer for you. Um, so add your chains where you need to, and go through the back loop only on the body of the bag. So both loops, and then back loop, and slip stitch. And now I'm getting tight again, so I'm just going to chain one, and then both loops and back loop and slip you chain one again sometimes it works out that you can slip stitch chain one slip stitch chain one and then you'll be able to slip stitch slip stitch and then chain one it just depends on your tension the size of your hook because i use such a smaller hook again that's why i'm running into these problems slip stitch and then both loops back loop see I didn't need to chain there but now I do so now we're gonna go into both loops here second last stitch on the bag back loop and slip stitch and then the last stitch goes right where the knot is basically and then once you get that last slip stitch in, you're going to slip stitch one more time to seal it off. Pull your tail through. i got a little bit left, not that bad. So now what I'm going to do to tie this off is I'm going to do what they call the surgeon's knot. It's just a loop it over, pass through two times, and tighten, and then go the other way, long piece over top of short piece. Oh one loop. And then you can weave in your ends along here. Let me take my needle. And then all I do is I just kind of do a back and forth weaving in my end. And kind of the more of a zigzag you get, the better of a weaving 
details won't come out, things won't come undone. It's the worst thing when your project comes undone. Like if you're out wearing a shirt and then you notice there's a tail that starts unraveling. And, oh my god, I don't have another shirt. If I wear this one anymore, it'll get ruined. So, okay, there's my stitch through. So you always want to make sure you uh, weave in your ends very tightly. And then just cut off your tail, it's garbage. And my tail is super tiny here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to non-threaded needle. And I'm just going to do the same thing, I'm going to pretend it's threaded and just weave it through like I just did that last tail. Yeah, about there. And my eye is still sticking in my needle. And then this is another little trick here. Then you thread it and then just pop the rest of the way through. Nothing worse than frustratingly dealing with a small end that you can't get through on a needle, so. There's a bonus tip. I'll make sure to include that in my video. I got a couple of videos coming up. So make sure you have that little bell icon. Lip. Okay. So my tail is on the wrong side. I'm just gonna simply pull it through the center hole. And then one more quick yank, make sure that's nice and cinched tight, there's no space, I can barely get my hook through there. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to chase my hook back up these center loops here. And grab my tail. And pull it straight through that. I'll secure that magic ring good and taut. And then you can snip your tail. And we're almost done! Almost done! Okay, so... Now this is the part where you're going to want to make sure to almost finalize the shape of your bag. Fold it kind of like a paper bag. I pinch it like a hot dog down the sides. And then when you get to the bottom, it just kind of stays there. Like that. This one does it too. Okay, so the next part we're going to be working on is we're going to be working on the string. Super, super, super simple. All you gotta do is take your crochet hook, the one that you made your project with, and you are going to make a slip knot. And make sure you leave about two or three inch tail. Um, you can add beads. Um, I have another little one I made. I'll show it to you at the end. Um, with little beads on the ends of the string. So if you want to put beads, leave a 3-4 inch tail. However many beads you want to put on it. And then all we're going to do is simply chain. And chain. <laughs> so we're going to chain, I'd say, almost a foot. So just keep chaining. Make your tail nice and long. Pause the video here, and when we come back, we will start working on how to put the chain into the backpack. And ultimately, there's no exact measurement, it kind of just depends on your bag. Now, if you take your bag and open it up, you want it to go completely around your bag and have probably about 6 inches or so to tie a bow tie. So, as you can see, I've got probably about another six inches here or so to go. Um, I brought my other little bag over here to show you guys. I used beads on this one. This one turned out super cute. It's uh, in a tan color. It looks kind of yellow on camera to me. It's got the little straps in the back. And little beads. And just open her up by pulling a little bead through the loop. And then you can see there's lots of space in this one too. But he's significantly smaller than the other one. Back to this backpack. So I think I've only got a few more chains through. There's probably about 60, maybe 70 chains here. Possibly even 80. I don't know. I'm sorry I'm not giving you guys exact counting. I just don't feel like counting tonight. We like to count. We like to crochet. So...
do it there. Let's see. Perfect. Leave your couple inches for your tail, for your beads if you choose so choose to put beads on. And then you've got your little string. So what we're going to do is you're going to fold your backpack back up. Now this time it actually really matters. So make sure these little corners are up and in line, like so. You got to make sure these guys here are pulled up, these two. And make sure that they're even centered, looks cute. And then you take your needle and thread your string that you just chained. And then you're going to just go down the third row down, third stitch in, third row down, third stitch in, and then come out third row down, third stitch in, like so. Give that a yank, it'll pull right through, it'll be a little forceful, but you're tough. You really are. You got this. And then same thing on the back. So three stitches, three stitches, three stitches. You have, make sure you're getting those three stitches on the inside there like that. You go down three. Sometimes you'll pop out on the second one or the fourth one. And then count down three on this side. One, two, three. And then make sure you come out on the same side so it's even. I'm doing this totally backwards, so praying to God this is going to look great. Yep, okay. And then once you're satisfied with placement, yank that puppy through. And then you're going to have to adjust your strings to even them up. Okay. So now that we've got this, Open it up, make sure it's all nice and pretty. See how it stitched it inside like that? And it just cinches it up real nice. Now that's got the perfect placement, we can fold our lid down and find out where we want to put our button. So I'm going to pop my button right. You want to give it a little kind of tug and go one extra stitch than you probably think you should. So. That's my placement there. I just need a little scrap of yarn here. For the button, and I lost my button. Okay, so these buttons can be really tricky. There's no way to do this. So you, can you see this? See that? That just doesn't work. I'm gonna show you a trick. Off one of these little guys. Uh, I think they look like snowmen. That thing that. You, you use to thread really, really tiny needles. Okay, so what you do is you take your little snowman threader and you take your button and you pop it into the buttonhole like that. And then you take your piece of yarn and then you just stick it into that hole. It's probably really hard for you guys to see because the little wire is so thin. Hold on a second here, I'll show you what I'm doing. There, see like that? The little wire and then now you can just pull your snowman thing well hold it a little tighter because you might pull the wire right off and your button is threaded so this is uh, i was struggling for days trying to figure out how to attach worsted weight yarn into some buttons because not all the holes on the buttons are that big that you can fit a regular darning needle through. I can't even fit my regular standard size darning needle all the way through. So how the heck am I supposed to stitch it? Well, there you go. I just showed you how. So you got your button on your string. And then, all right, we're going in this hole here. I'm just gonna use my crochet hook. So much easier. So I just pull the strand through there. And this strand through there. Hope you guys can see this okay. Alright. Okay. And then go back inside your bag here. 
and we're going to do the surgeon's knot again. And so that we'll go left over right and under two times and pull tight. Not super tight, but and then right over left and under one time. And there. Now you can weave your ends in if you so choose. Me, yeah, I don't mind. That knot is pretty sturdy right there. That, that knot's not going to go anywhere. Unless it bothers you being there inside, don't worry about it. Alright, so now you've got your button on your too cute backpack. Nice. Okay, now to do the straps. Now, my backpack I made was four inches tall. So I'm going to want to do eight inches of chaining plus two inches for the loop. So that's a 10 inch chain total. I'm not too sure if you guys are doing the same size as me, but I'm just going to chain a 10 inch chain and I will meet you back. You can pause the video while you chain and then just press play and we'll keep going. So. Start chaining, and chaining, and chaining, and I'll meet you back here in a second. Okay, so we're back, and we've got our 10 inch chain here, and I'm going to chain one more, and then we're just going to single crochet into the back of the chain. It just looks nicer. Um, if you don't know how to do this, um, I can show you on a tutorial, but basically uh, you're going into the back loop, normally single crocheting, instead of going into the side of the braid, like so, you're going into the bump on the back. Again, I'm going to do a tutorial on some little tips and tricks that I've picked up along the way in my years of crocheting. Um, I've been crocheting on and off for about 25 years. Um, more recently, I've been crocheting non-stop for the last year and a half. Um, alternating between knitting and crocheting. If you guys have seen my giveaway video, um, my 100 subscriber giveaway video, okay, if you haven't seen it, go see it. First off, go now. Pause video, go watch. Okay, anyways. So, if, now that you've watched the video, you have seen the sweater I was wearing, and that sweater was made by my grandmother, Doris, my mom's mom, and uh, she knitted that sweater herself. Um, she's no longer with us, but uh, her craft lives on through me. <laughs> my mom says I'm a spitting image of her anyways, so I take it as a compliment. She was a beautiful woman. Uh, she loved to knit more than crochet. Um, my mom would crochet on and off here and there. We had a house out in the middle of nowhere and she would start crocheting a blanket. I think she still got it. Um, like a green and a maroon, super fuzzy. Just a big giant granny square, but it was super warm, super comfy, and I mean, I loved it to death. But... You know, here and there, my mom would pick up a crochet hook and crochet away and do her thing. And you know, I've always had a crafty side to me, being a southpaw, left-handed. Um, we're told I'm told that we're naturally more creative due to the fact that we use the right side of our brain, which is the artistic, creative side. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I just know uh, I, I'm. Pretty crafty, pretty convenient to have, you know, I can sew and stuff. Sewing is pretty much, you gotta know how to sew to know how to crochet. Basic sewing anyways. And uh, I've always wanted a sewing machine so that I could make stuff myself. Just make that nice, fine, perfect stitch. But, uh, I haven't had one yet. I will one day. I don't really have the space for it right now anyways, so. 
Anyways, we're just getting to the end here of our... This one's giving me some troubles here. But we're almost to the end of my chain here. The so stitch will cooperate. There we go. Yeah, I've got that much left. So, sorry, excuse my mindless babbling. But, uh, yeah, I had a really good time. I went to my mom's this weekend. I had a visit with her. My nephew was there. Um, he's going to be in the intro to my time lapse. Um, I know I've said a lot about, I've mentioned it a couple times, I've mentioned my time lapse. And I actually really enjoyed making it, although I'm not finished it yet. But um, the programs I used made it pretty easy. Um, I had a lot of fun doing it, other than halfway through, <laughs> this is actually funny, halfway through, okay. Halfway through my time lapse, I'm, I've got my phone set up on a, a pedestal and bird's eye view of me doing time lapse. And I got it set for five second intervals. And so this thing is flashing every five seconds directly down on my work surface. And if, if you've ever done a 5D diamond painting, they're pretty sparkly. So it's starting to really irritate my eyes. And um, so halfway through <laughs> recording, I go to turn the settings, like set up again, go to set the settings up, turn the flashlight on. And I just noticed this one that said torch. It was on, off, or torch. I was like, you know what? Isn't a torch like a flashlight? Isn't that what they call them on iPhones? A torch? Anyway, so I pressed it. Lo and behold, it's a constant... Um, your cell phone flash is constantly on. And then it just takes the pictures instead of flashing you and blinding you. And you're like, oh my god. Anyway, so, so that was the only problem I ran into was getting headaches. Okay, so I'm at the end. Finally, after you enjoyed my poopy story. So, slips, or er, yeah, slip stitch and then cut your yarn and fasten off however you so choose. I just do the surgeon's knot left over right twice and under, and then right over left, or vice versa. You can go left over right, right over left, it don't matter. It still ties the same knot. And then, okay. So we'll cut our tail off. Actually, no. Leave this one on. Cut the little one. I forgot. Just cut the little one. Okay. I'll tell you why in a sec. So you got your string. You got your bag. And we're going to lay this. Now, you can make it straight. Follow it to the end. And then fold it directly in half again. So you get that little perfectly straight backpacks. And then the little backpack loopy. All you do is just flip the one and keep it continuous like that. So it's got the same sided loop. That's how you want it. And then you're going to take that, put the right way on the bag. Not the wrong way, Christine. Okay, so I start with the bottom ends first. I line them up in the middle. And then gently thread your needle. Patience and practice here. Ta-da! Okay, sorry, I'm in an overexcited mood today, and I don't know why. And then I'm just going to sew this on stupid quick. Oop, super quick. I can keep a hold of my thread while doing this all upside down for you lovely viewers. Okay, there's one attached and then I'm going just into the top part of it here and then I'm just kind of skiffing and grabbing a one strand of yarn and then just whip back to the top and scoop another one and we're done. Alright so I'm just going to take this and weave my tail back through like so. Come on, yarn. This yarn is weird to work with sometimes. It's a little finicky. But whatever. When you love crochet or knitting or whatever your craft is, you kind of tolerate it. 
Oh, this is taking exhaustingly long. Sorry, guys. Alright, we did it. I'm free! Alright, get rid of that tail. And now, scrap is too small. Take another chunk. I try to use my little tails that I cut off in between because I don't like to waste anything. Especially yarn. Stuff's expensive, man. My next task, don't tell him. Well, he'll probably find out when he watches the video, but my next task is to convince Brian, my boyfriend, to uh, let me order my own order from Ice Yarns. <laughs> Good luck, eh? Anyway, <laughs> maybe one day. If you're watching this, please, babe. Please. Okay, anyway, back to the backpack. So you want to leave a little bit of slack here so you can put your wrist or whatever through it. But you want to leave enough so that you have a little loopy to hang it on and stuff. So about there looks good for me. And just like you did the bottoms. Well, not just like you did, but I'm going back and forth on this one. And uh, I'm just going to tie this one off here. We'll weave those tails in in a sec. And then back in, I'm going straight through and through. So you can sew it in however you want to. And if you got a better method, tell me in the comments. Let me know. This is just kind of the way I've been doing it my whole life. Alright, so now you're going to want to weave this tail back into that braid at the top. Like we did the back and forth, back and forth. Make sure that's real nice and secure in there, because if not, you're going to lose your straps. And if you lose your straps, you lose whatever's in your backpack. And if it's your keys, you lock out of your house. Sucks. Anyways, I'm just going to take my crochet hook and pop it through here to grab this tail and bring it back through to the other side. And then again, because it's such a teeny tiny tail, I'm going to go this way. I weave first. God, it's stubborn yarn. Gorgeous yarn, but stubborn. And then thread the needle after it's been woven in. Can I get it? Did I get it? What the heck am I doing here? I don't even know. Okay, let's try this again. Flipping it over and in the eye. Got it, got it. Did it! Ugh. Okay, so that little itty bitty tail pain in the butt is just gonna disappear in here. Watch. I don't even need to cut this puppy if I can get it going. It's getting late in the day and I'm getting tired. Here we go. See? Okay, well, I need to cut that much off. Alright, and then cut my other tail. We are done. You did it. Well, I did it. I hope you did it too and you weren't just watching. But, uh, anyways. So, you have completed your backpack. Now, if you guys actually make this backpack, do me a favor. I have a channel, or not a channel, I have a channel, Creations by Christine, you're watching it right now. But I also have a Facebook page. And if you guys do end up doing any of my tutorials or start crocheting because you were watching my channel and if I taught you anything, regardless, if you make anything of mine, please post it on my Facebook page. It's Creations by Christine, or is it Creations by B Christine. I don't think they let me put the Y. Anyways, I'll link it down in the description. But if you make something that I've made, like if you make a backpack, send it to me on Facebook. I'll put it in a video. But uh, yeah, or anything of mine, whether it's a backpack. I got the heart tutorial. I'll uh, put at the end of the video, you can 
follow up with that one, but uh, yeah, aren't they adorable? Huh, they're so cute. So, doing this tutorial, I made one for my son, Evan. He really, really wanted one for God knows what, but he loves these little things. I do too, they're adorable. Um, I'm probably gonna end up selling them on my Etsy store. I don't know, but uh, I'm still in the works of deciding whether or not I'm going to um, start putting my patterns on Ravelry or not. Um, it's kind of all in the works, but uh, anyways, I'm not gonna wrap this up. I'm not gonna sit here and babble, babble, babble. So yeah, thanks for making this with me, guys um, and girls, girls and guys, men and women, children, ladies. Gents. And I am super excited to come out with my next video. The time lapse is coming up. I'm probably going to start another one because I did leave the time lapse at my mom, or the diamond painting at my mom's. So I got one I kind of started for my sister. I might do that and start time lapsing that. So we'll miss the first 10 minutes or so of me time lapsing. Um, but you'll end up to see the finished product. And it's been quite highly requested. So um, I better get on that. So yeah, make some backpacks, send me some pictures, subscribe, hit the bell down there so that when I post videos you know. Alright guys, give me some thumbs up. Bye!